There are quite a lot of mysterious, fascinating, and somewhat scary objects out there in the universe, with some of these objects being so powerful that they're able to destroy everything around them. In the process, absorbing a lot of mass and a lot of energy from the objects they're destroying. This is one such object. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the most recent discoveries in regards to these very peculiar and somewhat terrifying objects known as the Black Widow Pulsars, or sometimes just known as Black Widows. The objects of absolutely ridiculous power, able to basically destroy any star, any planet, anything in their vicinity. And through this destruction, they actually absorb a lot of this into themselves, becoming more and more powerful in the process, but also, at the same time, potentially solving one of the longest mysteries in regards to certain neutron stars, because that's basically what this is as well. This is a very unique type of a neutron star, or more specifically a pulsar, pulsating neutron star, that just so happens to be in just the right position and just the right orbit to suddenly start absorbing a lot of mass from its partner. With the one that was recently discovered being particularly interesting because it also seems to be way more massive than anything we've seen before. Potentially even reaching the theoretical mass of what a neutron star can be. Anything more massive than that and it might actually turn into a black hole, in the process initiating some kind of a very powerful explosion. But I guess let's start with the object itself. Where exactly is it and what do we know about it? So all this is from the study you can find in a description that essentially describes the object known as PSR J0952-0607, the fastest and heaviest known neutron star. This object is located in the Milky Way galaxy, but it seems to be a record holder for a lot of different things. First of all, it's about 2.35 times the mass of the Sun, making this object ridiculously massive compared to a lot of other neutron stars we've seen so far. On top of this, it spins really fast. So here's an example of a pulsar, a typical pulsar, that spins relatively fast, but not as fast as this one. Here the pulsations, as you can see, happen roughly around maybe 5 to 10 times every single second. But in this case, this is a millisecond pulsar, meaning that it actually spins at least several hundred times every single second. It's sort of difficult to imagine for our brain because it's just way too fast, but according to the recent observations, it has a spin of 707 times per second. So imagine this, but basically like 100 times faster. And because this object is also about 14 kilometers across, it makes it an extremely powerful entity. But by also being so massive, it has a lot of other features on the inside as well. And so in this case, thinking of this as basically some kind of a object made out of regular matter is somewhat incorrect because we don't actually understand what it's made out of. We call these objects neutron stars, but in reality only some of the outer shell is very likely made out of neutrons. The rest, and here we're talking about 500,000 masses of planet Earth, is essentially some kind of an unusual exotic object, very likely relying on quantum effects that we still don't understand. And this of course includes a lot of subatomic particles, a lot of up and down quarks, but possibly a lot of other stuff we cannot imagine. Things that scientists usually discover in experiments involving particle accelerators, but things that naturally seem to exist here at all times. And although today some scientists imagine this as a kind of a giant nucleus, something similar to what we find inside a typical atom, in reality the modern understanding of what's inside the neutron star is extremely limited. Here's one of the interpretations of what the scientists think might happen on the inside. So even though there are some neutrons and some electrons on the outside, the inside is mostly made out of Fermi liquid, basically a quantum effects liquid, but possibly some kind of a unusual exotic plasma representing the core. So in other words, when it comes to the mysteries of the universe, this is as mysterious as it gets. But the scientists behind recent study decided to specifically focus on this particular pulsar, mostly because of its extreme components, and they wanted to discover its exact mass and why exactly it's spinning so fast. And they seem to have figured out a lot of these questions. First of all, they were able to directly measure the mass of this object. As I mentioned before, it's about 2.35 masses of the Sun, but could be actually even a little bit more massive. But they were also able to study some of the leftover plasma from the glowing companion, and also figure out what happened to this companion as this pulsar essentially ate it alive. Now, from a lot of previous observations, the scientists generally understand that in a typical black widow pulsar, which usually produce very powerful gamma ray and radio emissions, you'll have a lot of pulsations both from the pulsar 
and from the object around it. And this object will also be leaking a lot of the matter, producing a kind of a comet-like tail that's visible from really, really far away. Generally, it will look something like this, but if you were to actually look at it with a telescope, it will resemble this in very specific frequencies. And this has actually been seen several times. Now, in this case, the cometary object itself is simply formed because of the motion of the star, or in this case, the binary, and also because of the stripping of the material, as the neutron star doesn't just absorb some of the mass, but also illuminates it with its two polar streams, or these very powerful jets, coming from both directions. But what's particularly interesting here is that this process seems to actually then feed the star even more. So in other words, by basically just starting to illuminate an object somewhere out there, and this was, by the way, very likely some kind of a star at first, as all of this matter sort of gets disturbed, and as all of it gets stripped away, some of it then creates an accretion disk around the neutron star, and also ends up powering the neutron star even more, with the accretion disk and all of this matter also adding a little bit of angular momentum to the neutron star. Or in other words, the accretion disk gives the neutron star a little bit more spin, which then increases its rotation even more. And so even though initially it might have been spinning really slow, or almost not at all, by doing this long enough, and by creating more and more mass around itself, it sort of feeds itself even more, increasing its spin, and producing even more powerful emissions in the process, with all of this becoming more and more rapid as the time goes on. And so this pulsar spin, once it starts, accelerates quite dramatically, until eventually the star very likely either disappears, or, more likely, turns into something much smaller. And in this case, the scientists believe that it created some kind of a planetary object around the system. In other words, right here, it's no longer absorbing a star, it's now absorbing the leftover planet, probably some kind of a gas giant, that used to be a star, but is now just a chunk of matter resembling Jupiter. And at some point, it might even become smaller, possibly even resembling planet Earth. Although in this case, resembling is not really the right term. In terms of mass, it might resemble a planet, but in physical terms, it's basically this super, super hot object stretched into this unusual shape with a lot of emissions coming from certain directions. With this process very likely starting because the original star became old enough and started to expand, turning into what's known as a red giant. With this donor star, eventually, through the emissions and through the absorption of a lot of matter, basically disappearing completely, because now a lot of this mass was transferred into the neutron star, turning PSR J0952 into essentially the most massive neutron star found. But as I mentioned in the beginning, this might have also solved one of the mysteries we had about these millisecond pulsars. There have been several cases where these pulsars have been discovered completely alone by themselves, spinning very, very fast. And nobody could explain why they're doing so, because that's not really how we believe they form. In this case, this might actually provide us with an explanation. Because as the neutron star in this case absorbs the star, it will eventually leave nothing behind, but will still be spinning pretty fast. With the planet either completely invisible or possibly even completely gone, the pulsar will then slowly start to slow down, but will still spin pretty fast for a pretty long period of time. Which of course implies that a lot of these millisecond pulsars discovered in the past are very likely just advanced versions of these Black Widow pulsars that we've discovered in a lot of different locations in the Milky Way. Which possibly finally solves their mystery, and solves a lot of other mysteries about the neutron stars. But also explains why the term Black Widow in this case definitely applies to this particular object. They actually seem to be capable of completely destroying their partners. And not just destroying them, but absorbing their mass and literally eating them. And at the moment, this seems to be the best explanation for what we're observing from these different objects. But if you'd like to learn more about these types of neutron stars, check out some of the previous videos that should be in the description or somewhere right there. On that note, well, that's pretty much all we know so far, but I'm sure more mysteries will be solved and more unusual details will be discovered in some of the future studies. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.